You're watching the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. So we welcome you back once again to Stanford University and Naples Pavilion for a close of this fantastic Friday. One spot remains in the regional finals. Will it be the defending champions in number three seed Cardinal or the Badgers from Wisconsin? Two teams, Karch Kirai, that have history. I'm Paul Sunderland. And what a match we had earlier on. The Texas Longhorns and the Utes of Utah into the fifth set. It was just drama right down to the wire. And Adora Naye so big for Utah, but my vote for player of the match. Yazi Bedarkhani coming in for Texas after not having played for a month and not having played outside hitter playing opposite most of this season and turning this match around for Texas including that last kill advancing them to the regional final and look at the reaction of her teammates they all know who the hero was tonight and it was Yazi Bedarkhani so the number six seeded Texas Longhorns will advance to yet another regional final they're looking to go to the NCAA national semis for the the sixth straight year. Will it be Stanford or Wisconsin? Hi again, everybody, and welcome. I'm Paul Sunderland, joined once again by my partner, three-time Olympic champion and U.S. national team head coach, Karch Kirai. We've already had a great one. We've hydrated. We've rested for about five <laughs> minutes, and we're ready to go once again. And these two teams, I mentioned they have history, and it's recent history just last year. Yeah, and we're paying a to more attention to it than I think they yeah, are. I but agree. it was a fantastic match. Stanford falling down 2-0 in Madison, sold out crowd and coming back after the intermission, after some inspiring words from their star Inki Ajanaku, moving on and eventually winning the championship. If you're a Wisconsin fan, you got to be excited about the chance for revenge, but really different teams, including a new coach for Stanford. And speaking of the Stanford Cardinal, they're a year older. Yeah, they're a bunch of sophomores instead of freshmen. <laughs> older. But are they a year better? If you look around to the Pac-12 conference, you'd say Catherine Plummer, who was the National Freshman of the Year, upped her game, the Conference Player of the Year, and then she had some company as well. She sure did. Jenna Gray and Morgan Hentz with fantastic seasons for Pac, uh, in their Pac-12 play. Only one loss in conference. Wisconsin on the other side is far better than their 11 and 9 Big Ten record and so impressed with the job that they've done losing a, a player in Molly Haggerty who could have been a big key for them this year. Two spectacular freshmen in their starting lineup and they're among our impact players. What a combination between Sidney Hilly, the new setter for Wisconsin and middle freshman Dana Redke at six foot eight, but she does not move like a six foot eight player amazingly. Uh, agile and can take care of all the skills, including serving and playing some defense in the backcourt. And then Tam Tammy Alade, the middle for Stanford, taking the place of Inki Ajanaku, but a very different middle, still having a great year, hitting over 400. You mentioned a little bit of different look on both sides. A lot of respect between these two coaches. They know one another well because Kevin Hambly in the white shirt is now in his first year on the sideline for the Stanford Cardinal after the retirement of Hall of Famer John Dunning. And he coached for eight years at the University of Illinois. And he has led Stanford to their 20th conference title. Only one blemish that was in five sets up at Washington. Here's Kelly Sheffield and what he has done. Speaking of five, five straight years into the regional semifinals, 28 and five last year. And uh, came over to Wisconsin after a very, very solid stint at Dayton University. In the NCAA Finals in 2014, that was the first year of Lauren Carlini, now part of your squad, Karch, and playing professionally over in Italy. Three freshmen starting for Wisconsin, and I couldn't agree more. Wisconsin is 22-9 and nine overall, 11-9 and nine in the Big Ten, but this is really, really a good volleyball team. Stanford, the advantage of advancing they are hosting playing in maples pavilion and now we have a moment let's take a look at your plan for success brought to you by northwestern mutual well i i'm gonna say that wisconsin really has to make katherine Plummer work she takes about 10 swings a game she's had over a thousand for the season and see how far deep they can make her dig make her work a lot in terms of passing receiving the serve and taking lots of swings 
for Stanford, left is right, meaning they have to serve really tough and keep the ball away from people like Dana Redke. Wisconsin's a little weaker on their left side where they take swings with their outside hitters, and that's where Stanford's block can be lethal. A lot of red this weekend at Maples Pavilion. The first kill for Catherine Plummer. Put down match point against Texas last year. Stanford, of course, is the Cardinal, and the official colors of Wisconsin are Cardinal and white. Here is Adriana Fitzmorris, one of four starters back from last year's championship team. And immediately another kill. This is Madison Duello, the six foot three redshirt sophomore out of Kansas City, where we'll be next week, Karch, for the national semifinals and finals. Semifinals on the 14th on ESPN, followed up by the finals on ESPN2, number seven. Defensive specialist Amber McDonald, 5'4 junior, coming on to serve for Wisconsin. Plummer with another big swing against three blockers this time. Yes, we saw Wisconsin working this move, this tactic, putting six hands in front of Catherine Plummer. We saw him practicing yesterday with this. Didn't seem to slow her down in the least. So that's certain they'll try, and I don't know if they'll stick with it, but you have to make Pat Catherine Plummer do something different. Here is Jenna Gray, the setter that we talked about, the setter of the year. Back to Dana Recky once again. And if you're a volleyball fan, get used to hearing the name Dana Recky, six foot eight freshman out of Riverside, Illinois. Just a spectacular volleyball player. What a mover, what an athlete and led Wisconsin in kills at the middle position. And she's got a nice serve, as you see there. She knocks Stanford out of system. She can play some defense. She's the whole package. You wouldn't expect that out of a six foot eight freshman. Blocked straight down by Catherine Plummer. Six foot six sophomore out of Elisa Viejo, California. Led the Pac-12 conference in hitting in terms of kills at 4.7 per set. Best three out of five sets, second regional semifinal as that ball drifts long here at Stanford. And what a nail biter, what a spectacular match we just concluded here at Maples Pavilion. Texas advancing 16 14 in the fifth over Utah. Yeah, we weren't sure how Texas was going to respond, getting really tested for the first time in a while. And they formulated a, a, a really strong response. And Yazi Bedard honey coming yeah. in to lead them. It seemed like they all picked up after she she came in. They have so much trust in her. First look at the Libro of the Year in the conference, Morgan Hintz. I think one of the most exciting and productive players in all of college volleyball. Combination play, the timing not quite there, and a net violation is called against Jenna Gray, number one in white for Stanford. There is Kelly Bates. Interesting. This is, in the last four years, the 132nd match for Wisconsin. It is the 132nd appearance for Bates. On the tap down. Grace Loeber moved into the starting lineup for Lauren Gillis, who had had some back issues, and all she did was go for a career-high 11 kills against Marquette, and then on the next night, a career-high 13 against Iowa State last weekend. Right side, your 6 8 is Retke, our 6 8 is Marenna <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. Lutz. <laughs> you mentioned Kelly Bates and all those matches she played for Wisconsin. There was some question as to whether she would yeah. play. She got a really stern talking to after her sophomore year when Kelly Sheffield, her coach, just said, you should probably find another coach to play for because I don't know if I can help you with this stubborn streak that she had. And that was really a wake-up call. And then she was a very accepting of playing the libero role for her in the third year and now back to outside hitter in the fourth, doing a lot more for the team. Loberg misses that just long. Stanford and Wisconsin tied at six apiece in this opening set. Bates with a perfect pass, nice rhythm to the outside. And Loberg, number 21 in Cardinal. <laughs> I won't confuse you. I'll, say, <laughs> yeah. I'll just say in the dark uniform, the higher seed yes. gets, gets to be designated as the home team. So that's why Stanford 
the number three seed is wearing their white uniforms. Wisconsin unseeded for the first time in 15 years. Combination play, Plummer again. Catherine Plummer already with three quick kills. And we're going to see some heavy arms tonight. We saw one from Loberg the last play, and then Plummer. And we got to watch her here against Washington earlier this year, just blowing people up as they try to defend her on the floor. Loberg is Ruth. Fitzmorris, number 12 for Stanford, out of the middle. At six foot six, an outstanding volleyball player. Yeah, if you have a well-formed block in front of you and you've got a 6'6 six, six blocker and a 6'1 blocker, you probably want to challenge the 6'1 <laughs> a little more than the taller. Nice read by Hence. Hence all over that. That's a better shot. Good first contact in system. And Tiffany, nice up by Clark. Tiffany Clark, the transfer from Michigan. Interesting story there. On the slide, nice dig in the cross court. And Loberg finds a small seam, but what a dig by 5'10 sophomore M.E. Dodge wearing number 19 as she heads to the sideline for Wisconsin. Three great defensive touches there. Just showing off their eye work and the fact that they're putting themselves in good positions as the hitter's contacting the ball. Plummer. And again. Was there a six foot eight foot, <laughs> six foot eight blocker in front of her? It didn't look like it that time. Boom, right around Redke. Wow. Very impressive start. And I feel like she's a little more patterned with that cross court. Yep. I think you have to start by taking a lot of that away, even though they tried to with their three person block earlier. Retke again coming right back. All right, Karch. If you've got, let's say you're playing against China Zhu Ting and she's yep. predominantly cross court, what do you tell your blockers to try to get in front of that favorite shot? Well, they have to adjust, and of course, they have to see where the set is and where it is in relation to her. But there are some players like her who can negate any block and go right over, and then it's almost pointless to block with three because you have fewer people to dig behind her as she hits over the block. There's a three and, and a nice uh, adjustment by yeah, Plummer. Yeah, Catherine Plummer off to a perfect start. Cross court, cross court, cross court. Yeah, and then I'll pull it down the line. As soon as they get the poor pass, Wisconsin can set up pretty well, but Plummer goes right over a pretty good block by Duello. Ooh, ace serve, first of the match for Jenna Gray. She and Plummer are a couple of the servers for Stanford who hit it on a very flat trajectory. It doesn't cross the net by much. much. It doesn't give passers much time to respond. Another good deep serve. Nice response by Clark. And off the top once again. Dana Redke is a really interesting story. She didn't play volleyball early. She was a basketball player, a dancer, a soccer player. And she just, one of her best friends, took up volleyball and she just wanted to be part of the cool group. So as a, a freshman in high school, she tried it. But in, even until late in her high school career, unforced error here by Plummer, Recu will go back to serve again. Very highly recruited as a basketball player. And even one point was recruited by Tara Vanderveer, the Hall of Fame head coach here at Stanford. That's how good a basketball player she was. We'll finish that up, too, in terms of what how she dis, how did she change her mind on that well went and scrimmaged with uh, a college basketball wow. team and well just got it handed to her so she decided <laughs> she needed the net in between her what a play by jenna gray and the first kill by tammy alati number six in white showing off her offense which wow. again is very different than inky ajanaku's the star for them last year a serve the second for stanford that's a one-two combo when you have Jenna Gray and then Catherine Plummer. Those are probably their two best servers. Plummer a little more error prone, but when it goes in, it gives people lots of trouble. Stanford 28 and three on the year, 19 and one in the Pac-12. Number three seed overall. Nice timing to the outside and a high hard swing by senior Kelly Bates out of Bradley, Illinois. She was the libero last year for Wisconsin when these two teams met. 
And Molly Haggerty, who's on the sideline for Wisconsin, has been must miss, much missed all season long. Lutz off the block and out of bounds. Molly Haggerty was the Big Ten freshman of the year and a six rotation outside hitter. So Wisconsin, she had back surgery exactly. last January, and they just didn't want to risk it. So and she has had to sit out the entire year. Still rehabbing, but now she'll get to be in the same class as Hilly and Repke. And that could be an imposing force the next next three seasons. Tiana Williams, 6'2 junior out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Heavily braced left knee. She's had some knee and some calf problems, but trying to fight her way through it was also first team. All Big Ten, along with Retke. Right side again, Moretta Lutz, unforced error, out of bounds into the antenna. You can see Wisconsin choosing to make Plummer carry a little bigger load. Serving her right in the middle of the court, or the seams around her. And try to wear her down in this long season where she's been passing a lot, hitting a lot, serving a lot. Lutz again took a little bit off of that dug by Wisconsin. Fitzmorris one on one on the outside. Beautiful set that time by Jenna Gray in transition. A little fast break volleyball will step aside just underway here in this last national and regional <laughs> semifinal. It's been a long night. <laughs> Stanford Wisconsin opening set. Maples Pavilion, Stanford University with Karch Kirai on Paul's Underland. And yep, Penn State and Stanford have each won seven national titles. It was the first since 2004 last year when Stanford defeated the University of Texas three sets to one in Columbus, Ohio, the national championships this year. Semifinals on the 14th of December in Kansas City. Those will be on ESPN. The finals on ESPN2 on the 16th. Opening set, Stanford leading by one. Nice touch that time by the Libero, Tiffany Clark, getting Wisconsin right back in system. And Grace Loberg registers the kill. There she is, number 21. Can I say red instead of Cardinal? It's a little confusing when they're the Stanford Cardinal. <laughs> nobody, I hope nobody in Madison gets mad at me. I mentioned that Cardinal is their official color. Easy serve to Hens. That ball tipped shortly over the top. Megan McClure couldn't get there. What a great spot to pick for that tip, too, because Kate Formico, number 11 for Stanford, was behind the block and would have gotten it anywhere else but over the middle blocker. Sydney Hilly, as she has done all season long, setting a very nice opening set, as is Jenna Gray. You've got a freshman setter for Wisconsin in Hilly wearing number one and Jenna Gray a sophomore running things also wearing number number two excuse me thank you Karch wearing number two for Wisconsin. Nice pass. Loberg able to get that ball inside of Fitzmorris. Both teams doing a wonderful job offensively. Look at Wisconsin, 474. Are you kidding? 12 of 20 with three errors, now 500. And uh, Stanford hitting at 421. Just underway, though. Shank pass by McClure. And Plummer off the block and out of bounds, working it off of number 14, Duello. Watching that last match, Utah versus Texas, we didn't see many players on a trouble set like that take a big swing. Plummer creates something out of nothing and she can that's one of the many facets she offers Stanford. Off speed shot down the line and finding some room in the middle of the defense for Stanford. I like the choice so far for for Loberg to start for Wisconsin. She's definitely bringing a lot of offense. She's got more heat on the left side. And then they uh, because much much of that year they were playing with Lauren Gillis in that position that they decided to make the change and getting some good production.
Stanford having to deal with some out of system situations. And that ball out of bounds by Moretta Lutz, number 17, the six foot eight red shirt senior. And this is a key rotation. If Wisconsin can serve well and get Jenna Gray on the run, they know it can really be a, a threat in only one position, setting Catherine Plummer. Update, three of the top four seeds have advanced, Penn State, Florida, and then Kentucky in that thrilling win in Lexington over BYU. Biggest upset, no doubt, Mick Haley and the Trojans up and down all year long, up all the way today, Karch over Minnesota, and then a five-set thriller as well right here, Texas 16-14 in the fifth over Utah. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage will continue with the national semifinals December 14th, 7 Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, you know where to go. Visit NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Amber McDonald, 5'4 junior out of Georgia, snowy Georgia, <laughs> so far in the last 24 hours. Alade again, slicing and dicing inside the 10-foot line. That's a couple of times now she's worked around a two-person block, a well-formed block against her. That's what Wisconsin would want to do, put four hands. But Alade winning that battle so far. Does Stanford miss the great Inki Ajanaku? Yes, who wouldn't? But Temi Alade has done an unexpectedly brilliant job of filling in. And to that point, as Retke registers another kill, Inki Ajanaku last year, Carrying a huge load, hit 407. Alade's hitting 422, best in the conference. Also a pretty good blocker as well. Recky can be a very dangerous server, as many as five aces in a match earlier this year against the Michigan Wolverines. And now another dangerous server at the line for Stanford and Catherine Plummer. Caused some problems with her last serving turn. Wisconsin leading 20 to 19. Nice pass by Gillis, a little bit tight, but that's going to be a violation blocking the set. Good job by Hilly, the setter, to get to that ball first before it got in the plane. And then it's just survival of the fittest. Exactly. Some part of that ball has to break the plane and get on the other side of the net, and that ball there was not. There was no part of the ball that Alade could touch, so if you touch it, it's illegal. Not a good first contact out of system. Plummer half speed. Bates into the cross court. On the sideline, and now Wisconsin with their largest lead of the opening set. Kelly Bates hitting 245 on the year. I tell you what, for an undersized outside hitter in the Big Ten, that is, that is really good production. Tough serve. First swing from McClure, covered by Plummer. Oh, ripped down the line. Moretta Lutz giving it the, the double fister. That's a tough matchup. She's got over eight inches on Kelly Bates. Six foot eight against five foot 11. Good choice by Jenna Gray on that broken play. Moretta Lutz, again, the fifth year senior here, has played in the middle for Stanford very successfully and now moving to the right side. Tough serve off the top of the tape. Hilly's there. Out to McClure. Down the line and good. The only freshman in the starting lineup, number four in white. Six foot four freshman out of Rancho Santa Margarita, a member of the Pac-12 all-freshman team. And now Kelly Sheffield will counter with a timeout called by Wisconsin. Yeah, at the end of this play, Sydney Hilly was looking back at her defense and saying, oh, I went too far. She went too far to her right. It was too big a space for her middle to close. And McCuller, with her good vision, found it. Stanford, the defending NCAA champions, 10 times they have been on the top of the podium. Beat Texas last year. They're a year older. Are they a year better? Lost to Penn State mentioned that both of those on neutral courts, the Pac-12 champion, Stanford has won now 20 conference championships. They had the player of the year, the setter of the year, and the libero of the year, Jenna Gray, joining Catherine Plummer.
along with Morgan Hintz. Stanford leads the all-time series between these two outstanding programs, 3-0. We talked about last year's meeting. Look at the offensive numbers. Wisconsin hitting 542. The offense really strong here. We call talk about side out percentage. And that, what that is is every time the other team is serving, how often do you win? What percentage of the time do you win those points? A well played match is in the high 60s. Wow. Wisconsin is siding out at 76%, Stanford at 72%. And as a result, it's just really tough to score on block and defense because the offense is right now overpowering the defense. Bates awaiting the delivery from Morgan Hintz. And it makes it that much more important when you're siding out like that to serve tough and create an opportunity like this one. Oh, nice off speed. Sydney Hilly out of system with some perfect location. Really impressed with his six foot freshman out of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Number three recruit nationally. She's wearing number two for Wisconsin. Good pass by Plummer. Fitzmorris again. Jenna Gray really doing a good job moving the ball around. When you try to choose a setter, Karch, and you've had some real battles on your team, what are you looking for first and foremost? Well, first and foremost, the ability to locate the ball and then to make good choices. Put your hitter in good spots. You don't have to be perfect, don't have to be great. Just put it in a spot where the hitter can do the work. That's a pretty good spot, and doing work is number 11, Tiana Williams. Both middle blockers, Retke and Williams, made the all Big Ten team. They were the only members on that distinguished group this year for the University of Wisconsin. Retke was the conference freshman of the year in front of Stephanie Samity. And she checks in. Chance to block, but doesn't get the stuff. Got to come. Will, we'll get the offense now. Gillis playing in the front court now. Tarecki! And just like that, surprise, surprise, Dana Retke leading the way for Wisconsin as they take the opening set over the number three seed, Stanford Cardinal. 25-22. Set point on the slide. Why not? Perfectly executed by one of the best young players in the country. Well, two six eight athletes going at one another. On your left, Moretta Lutz, redshirt senior for Stanford, already a national champion. And Dana Retke, one of the top players in the country, already set seven school records this year at Wisconsin. Look at that. Rachel Kramer, Florida, has moved on. Excellent performance over UCLA today. They will play USC. That was a big surprise. <laughs> Moretta Lutz. <laughs> Draymond Green, but if Draymond's standing on his wallet, he's about seven foot six. Yeah, exactly. He's in he's in minute bowl territory. <laughs> he's laughing all the way to the bank. Good that for was, him. That was a great line I heard many years ago. Remember how skinny minute bowl was? Somebody wrote that his team could save a lot on travel costs by just faxing him from city to city. <laughs> <laughs> they could do it digitally now. For yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> Welcome back to Maple. One Maple's. of the legendary shot blockers. Yeah, right? no question, no question. It could shoot the three. Yeah. Had some great years with uh, the Washington Wizards. Seven teams have advanced to the regional finals tomorrow. Coming your way on ESPNU. Will it be Stanford or Wisconsin to occupy the final spot? Texas has already moved on. A thriller. That finished about 45 minutes ago. Texas coming out on top 16 14 in the fifth. Just underway here in the second. Loberg was very good in the opening set, six of 11, and Dana Retke was perfect, six for six. Retke again. First time she has been slowed down. Oh, look at that shot. Sydney Hilly reading the situation. How savvy for a freshman and to beat somebody as yeah. good with her eyes and defense and explosiveness as Morgan Hentz. That's saying something. 
Sydney Hilly following in the footsteps of Lauren Carlini. Good swing off the block, still in play. Good touch by Plummer, quality touch. Timing not there on the slide. Plummer, oh, look out below. And Plummer, also nice vision. She saw that one, the left side blocker for Wisconsin, Lobert, went off to try to block the slide, dropped out of the play, and she hit that open space. Six rotation, outside hitter at six foot six. I mean, what a player. And remember last year they had to switch her yeah. in the middle of the season. They decided we're going to run a 5-1. We're going to put Catherine Plummer at outside hitter and, st and play her full time. She's going to be passing in all the formations and contributing in every other way and had a exceptional freshman season. And Loberg, Grace Loberg able to hammer that ball to the floor. One more thought on Catherine Plummer. I mean, you think back a long time. Logan Tom, a four-time Olympian, was a wonderful all-around volleyball player. I think Catherine Plummer, or I'll ask you, does she have that kind of all-around volleyball potential in a six-foot-six frame? I think she does just a different kind of player, but she's got this uh, the subtle touch to her because she's played so much beach volleyball. So she's used to touching the ball a lot. And that has really helped her out compared to the typical tall outside hitter who comes into college. Here is Hilly. Nice delivery to Recky. Cracked down the line and cannot be played defensively. And Catherine Plummer again had 18 kills in the national championship last year and just picked up right where she left off having a magnificent sophomore season. Hitting hit 320 as an outside hitter. <laughs> all those matches, all those quality matches in the Pac-12 conference. Grace Loeber. Wow, what has she done offensively, especially since Lauren Gillis, the 6'1 senior outside hitter, has had some back issues. And lastly on Plummer, to hit 320 when you're taking 10 swings uh, more or more per set and when everybody in the gym knows you're going to get set a lot of those, that's impressive because there's such a good defense and block in front of you so often. Alade, number six in white with a kill. Both of these teams hitting in an incredible clip. clip. Stanford hitting 395. <laughs> Look at this. This is unworldly for Wisconsin hitting 588 so far for the match. Yep, I don't think Stanford is causing enough trouble with its serve, and so Wisconsin just readily running its offense. Good cover by Clark. Soft shot up into the block to keep the point alive. Stanford's going to have a chance here. Gray with the first contact. Plummer, sharp angle this time. Undiggable into the cross-court corner. Plummer already with seven kills on, make it eight kills on 11 swings. Hitting a cool 636. Tough swing here, but somehow tucking that ball down inside for Kelly Bates. Mentioned that she had played now in 132 matches for Wisconsin. Helps to be six foot eight sometimes. And for several years, Maretta yeah. played middle, and that was her bread and butter. They wanted to get her that set, a fast set. We call it a gap or a 31, a shoot set that puts a, a lot of trouble at, a, that brings a lot of trouble toward opposing right side blockers. Plummer, good flat serve. Bates tucked it down inside, kept alive, and Gray. Almost got there. That was a nearly impossible angle and almost got that ball back on the side of Wisconsin. Wow, some great touches. This one by McClure. Ooh, number one, and then Gray almost making the ball clear. That was within a few centimeters. Tied at six, second set. Wisconsin won the opening set 25-22.
and has been superb offensively. What a nice set. And down the line for Bates. Wow, I really like how Wisconsin's pushing that ball up on a play like this. This is far away, but locating the ball perfectly four feet off the net. Once again, Sidney Hilly, either overhand, which is preferable, or underhand, has been right on target. And we mentioned Lauren Carlini, who was a starter and an All-American for four years at Wisconsin, and Hilly was not at all bashful about following someone of that reputation she she said look i'm my own player i'm my own person and she's established that reputation what a read that time on the overpass by hilly adriana fitzmorris over the top Stanford worked, off, worked awfully hard all season long to be the number three seed, to be able to host a regional. Pretty quiet in here. Pretty quiet in here right now. Stanford fans need to support their Cardinal. Nice kill down the line by Tiana Williams. And worked really hard to win the Pac-12. I'm not sure they got the best to draw. <laughs> so no. When you have the Big 12 undefeated winner in Texas waiting in the wings and a very strong Wisconsin, stronger than that 11-9. Big Ten record would indicate. Wisconsin has been absolutely superb so far in this match. Stanford with a narrow lead here in the second. I agree with you, Karch. I think a lot of it has to do with some deficiencies at the service line for the Stanford Cardinal. Here's Kate Formico. See what she can do. 5'9 freshman on to serve. Defensive specialist. Wow, not handled by Stanford. McClure should have made a better play out of it. McClure again and is stuck. Oh. Look at the dig by Hintz. Wow. Hence again, ball set a little bit deep off speed. And that ball's on the floor. We're going to have a challenge. Under the guidelines of ball in or out, you can also challenge ball up or down. And we will have a challenge right now in live action. Let's take another look. I thought Bates got to this ball. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to see more angles than that. Yeah, I'm not sure you can tell from that angle. Let's see. No, that, I think I, that hit the floor. I do, too. I do, too. I think that hit the floor. That's yeah, really good work by our crew. Yeah. You can see it bouncing and then it hitting yeah. her hand. But she was pretty adamant. She was. She was. That's all part of the game. Got to help the referees make the right call. <laughs> Morgan Hentz once again. It's one thing to dig heat. It's another thing to be able to pursue. It's another thing to have the imagination to understand where. Look at this. Who thinks that that ball is going there? Look at everybody else on her team stopped. Yeah. Although after playing with her for a while, they should never stop. They've always got to. Expect her to make plays like that. She's that explosive. Morgan Hintz, 5'9", just a sophomore out of Lakeside Park, Kentucky. Made the Pac-12 freshman team last year, averaging four digs per set. And her numbers are down because a lot of teams, they just consciously try to hit the ball away from her. There is Formico again. Stanford now leading 10-8. Nice pass by Bates. That's a hittable ball. And that's going to be a net violation. Fitzmorris looking around along with Jenna Gray, and both of them wondering, who me? But no challenge there. Even though the offenses are generally winning out so far, I'm really impressed, impressed with the floor defense on both teams. Not only are they touching the ball, but they're putting it in positions off the net where they're teammate can then make the next touch and play and, and make a good set Two elite teams and maybe maybe the best attacker in the country you know Simone Lee for Penn State has had a magnificent year is the con is the conversation about player of the year down to Sheehan Plummer do you think uh, I think it'll depend on a lot on what happens this weekend <laughs> <laughs> as it normally seems to six foot six bookends 
Fitzmorris and Plummer tapping that ball to the floor and now Stanford with their biggest lead. For example, if Wisconsin wins this match, I think that hurts Plummer's yeah. chances. That ball was in the plane and also Sidney Hilly in the front court right now. Good serve by McClure. Flat serve there, but perfectly passed. Recchi with another kill. Dana Recchi now is eight of nine. The freshman of the year in the Big Ten is hitting. The, the computer hasn't changed yet. She's sitting over 900. <laughs> and their connection is really Perfect. impressive, yeah, these yeah, two freshmen. Yeah. Watching a film from other matches, the pass will be in a really tough spot, and they'll still run the slide. They'll run it in front of the setter instead of behind, and, they, and Hilly finds her so well. Easy target at six foot eight. Crowd getting antsy. Stanford has not lost at home all season long. Down the line, and Tiffany Clark, the Libro again, transferred from Michigan, unable to make the dig. Not only did she transfer, but she played at Michigan last year, and here she is playing in another Big Ten school. The subsequent year did not have to sit out, did not lose a year. It was a decision and a waiver granted by the conference. Yeah, that's normally not going to be granted when you transfer in conference. First error, the red key. That ball hit out of bounds, and Stanford back on top by three. That ball served just into the top of the tape. Sydney Wilson out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, number 21, coming on to serve. This is that rotation where Stanford does not have a slide. Adriana Morris is not Fitzmorris is not in the front row to be able to run that behind the setter. So if Wisconsin can force a poor pass, it's very likely that the set has to come out here to Plummer. That would be a chance for Wisconsin to get three blockers up against her. Perfect pass. Outside to Plummer, one on one. Book it. We've got the media timeout here in Palo Alto. Stanford looking up at Wisconsin trailing. One set to none, but Catherine Plummer doing everything she possibly can and more. 11th kill so far on the night. See her take a step to our left, her right. And she's leaning toward Catherine Plummer out on our left side. She gets faked out here, and Wisconsin leaves a one-on-one. -on -one. You do not want to do that with <laughs> Catherine Plummer. If anything, you want to have her one-on-three because that's going to be a tough road to hoe. A rare mistake on the Wisconsin side as they've been solid this whole match. Wisconsin yet to block a ball for a point. Stanford has three stuffs. Here is Gray. Stanford trying to up its service game, but the reception and first ball contact for Wisconsin has just been up to the task. Bates off the edge and out of bounds. Kelly Bates is having a really good first set and a half. A, a rare misconnection between Hilly and Redke, but then um, Hilly makes up for it with a great set from way off the net for the kill. Plummer into the cross court oh. once again. A facial delivered. Ball on top of the net. Tough chance there to Alade. Wow, Catherine Plummer just unloaded. And Recky <laughs> comes up with it. You got to use every part of your body, and boom. I love it. As long as you point those surfaces up, there you go. Good things can happen. We Most of the defense is getting hit by the ball, Paul. That's right. We were watching Dana Recky yesterday playing Pepper, warming up for practice yesterday. They were she going can, at it. She can play volleyball. Yeah. Very, very nice contest. <laughs> there, there was a really impressive play she made against Penn State yes. earlier this year. Served an overpass. Her whole team bailed, and she dives to make the, the ball that comes back over from her serve and save it. That ball set a little bit too tight. Very nice push that time by Lutz off the edge of the block. Stanford leading 17-14. And that's a smart play by Lutz, who, again, had to adjust. She was a middle for much of her career with Stanford. Then they asked her to switch to the opposite. And that's a savvy play when the set is not in a good position to push it into the block. Lutz now with half a dozen kills. Plummer, perfect dig right on target. And Lutz is able to bang the ball to the floor. 
Boy, two outstanding setters doing work here tonight. Jenna Gray, number one for Stanford, and Sydney Hilly, number two for Wisconsin. And the Badgers call a timeout with Stanford riding their largest lead, 18-14, here at home in Palo Alto. Jenna Gray leading the comeback here for the Stanford Cardinal 18-14 in the Wisconsin timeout. Jenna Gray, a very, very good athlete. You need to be to play setter at this level. And she's got an arm. That third sport, of course, besides indoor volleyball, beach volleyball, is launching the javelin. National performer, All-American. Stanford has an outstanding track and field program. A couple of pretty good track and field universities in the Pac-12 conference, thinking of the University of Oregon, among others. You know, a lot of setters think, oh, I could be a great hitter. Well, she's got the arm for it. She, <laughs> when, when she thinks that, she's probably right. <laughs> Sienna Williams, nice high flat swing for number 11 for Wisconsin on the slide. Sydney Hilly just does not miss combinations with William Retke. And her location to the pins is outstanding. Even the one misconnect to Recky, Recky was able to touch it and put it in a place to give some trouble to Stanford. Lutz into the cross court. You heard the whistle, a net violation called against Williams of Wisconsin. Stanford, very comfortable lead here, 19 15. Taylor Formico coming on to serve now and play defense for the Cardinal. 28 and 3 on the year, 19 and 1 in conference, and misses that into the top of the tape. Back to serve for the Badgers, number 17. You know, Big Ten seems like it's pretty loaded with setters when you have yeah. Hilly, you have Kelly Hunter with Nebraska, their setter of the year. You have Sam Seliger Swenson. You have Jordan Poulter at Illinois. Just a, a great setting conference. Oh, nice off speed once again from long range. Megan McClure pulling the string on that one. Four sophomores in the starting lineup for Stanford. The senior Lutz, and then you add the freshman Megan McClure, who head coach Kevin Hambly said when she first came aboard, she was a high school player. Now, now she's a college player. Nice block. Recky is stopped for the first time. Recky trying to hit the slide against Catherine Plummer. Timeout called by Wisconsin. Their second and last timeout. Stanford on top, 21-16. Yep. And Fitzmorris is leaning toward this. You can see her leaning left. She wasn't leaving, but she read that play nicely and gets back in to help Catherine Plummer. That's a solid block. Six, solid Stan block at six foot six times two. Stanford now with their fourth stuff block. Wisconsin still looking for their first. ESPN has a couple of great matchups Saturday afternoon at noon. It's number one Duke as they take on Boston College. And then at two, Indiana faces Louisville. Men's basketball on ESPN Saturday at noon. And two Eastern, of course, streaming live on the ESPN app. Back with U.S. National Team head coach, Karch Kirai. I'm Paul Sunderland. And uh, the end of a fantastic Friday of college volleyball. Forty had one very big upset. That was USC over Minnesota. And, you know, he's going, wait a minute, it's a 10 over a 7. But USC has been so inconsistent and so unpredictable. And Minnesota ha has been one of those steady the course kind of teams. So I, I was surprised at that result. But congratulations to USC. And then we had the wonderful match earlier in the day when Kentucky, the number four overall seed, came back in the fifth set to take out BYU. Wonderful match. And then earlier this evening, Texas 16-14 in the fifth over University of Utah. And in each of those matches, the left side hit or the outside had the impact. Leah yeah. Edmonds yeah. from uh, Edmund from Kentucky and Kalia Lanier, a great match for USC. And then in this most recent match, Texas with uh, Yazi Bedart Honey coming in in an unexpected role. She has not been playing left side hitter this season and hadn't been in a match in a month since November 8th. Back to this turn down the line and out of bounds by Loberg and back to Kentucky once again. Another young setter, Madison Lilly, was the national setter of the year in high school the year before. Now she's a freshman and Avery Skinner out of Texas for the University of Kentucky had a career high 20 kills. 
A lot going on on this Friday. More to come on Saturday. Lily and Hilly. <laughs> A Both pretty having good, great yeah, seasons. Yeah, freshman seasons leading to elite programs. And speaking of which, Sidney Hilly will go back to serve. Stanford with a comfortable five-point advantage. Good deep serve. Into the cross court, working on McClure. The service story so far, that's the first ace for Wisconsin. Three aces for Stanford. Both teams hitting an outrageous percentage against one another. Get to that in a moment. Off speed again through the block and down. Stanford so far on the night card hitting 431. Waiting for the computer to update. Well, 448 for Wisconsin. Wow, big numbers. Big numbers. And a timeout called by Stanford. Yeah, how about Lo Loberg hitting 430? Wow. 12 kills, only three errors on 21 swings. She's going to have another career high for the third match in a row. Remember, going back to the first and second round at Iowa State, she goes for 11 kills against a good team from Marquette, and then against the hosts, the Cyclone, she goes for 13 kills, and now she's already got 12 on 21 swings. Retke with eight kills. Kelly Bates, solid, hitting 500, 6 of 12. Plummer leading the way with 11 kills, followed by Moretta Lutz, and then Adriana Fitzmorris. Wisconsin on the year, 22 and 9 overall, 11 and 9 in the Big Ten. There you see the bracket once again. Texas has moved on. Saturday, 6 Eastern time on ESPN, 3 on ESPNU, excuse me, 3 out here on the West Coast. It'll be the Gators taking on the Trojans. And who will Texas play? Will it be a rematch of last year's national championship won by Stanford? Three sets to one. What a match we had between Utah and Texas. I hope you were with us on ESPN 3. And then on ESPNU, it lasted so long we switched <laughs> over. <laughs> And to win a tournament like this, it's just there are too many good teams when you have to win six rounds to get there. So at some point, you're going to be severely tested. Yep, yep. Texas may have survived the test they needed to, just as Stanford did against this Wisconsin team just last year when Wisconsin hosted that regional. And Kentucky has certainly been tested as well. Twice, twice yeah. in a row. Yeah, down two sets to none to Western Kentucky and then coming back from a big deficit. Hummer again. Dug by Clark. What else have you got? Back to Plummer. That ball well off the net. Nice choice. What a smart roll shot that time by Plummer, number two in white. In the same rally, a roll shot, some heat cross court, and then another roll shot. I really like how Plummer mixes up her shots, her speeds, her locations, her depths. And the service error by the defensive sub, Wilson. It's still a three-point advantage for Stanford. Wisconsin won the opening set 25-22 and was just about flawless. <laughs> Stanford hit 400, sided out at 70%, <laughs> and lost. How many times has that happened this year, Karch? I'm guessing zero. Zero. That's the beauty of this game. You never know what's going to unfold. It could be a defensive battle and the offenses are under 200, or it could be... Both offenses over 400. Plummer a couple of tough swings again. Ripping inside of Recky. Set points now for Plummer and Stanford leading 24-20. Catherine Plummer just crushing right now. 12 kills on 20 swings. Here is Gray, set point number one, hybrid handled easily. Dug by Hintz to Plummer. Retke's cooled off a little bit in a rare double contact against Sidney Hilly, and we are tied at one set apiece. Stanford comes back to take the second, Karch Kirai 25-20. And we have come to intermission. A real battle between Stanford and Wisconsin. Tied at a set apiece.
When we come back, we'll have highlights of day one of the regional semifinals. Number two in white for Stanford, 13 kills on 23 swings, 478 efficiency. And if you're wondering, look, if you're new to the game, it's not a batting average. It's not like three for four. In volleyball, you take the number of kills, subtract the number of errors, divide it by the number of attempts, and then you get a true efficiency or your impact on the match. And 478 <laughs> is like out of this world. Basically, what it really means is every time you take a swing, you earn your team half a point on average over the course of the season. Some of those points will go to the other team when they block you or you hit out and then you get a lot of kills. But on average you want to get higher fractions out of each swing from each of your hitters. That was a little over my head Karch, but you knew that. <laughs> well if you're hitting 100 and I set you on average we're going to get a tenth of a point. If Redke's hitting 500 we're going to get a half a point and we'd much rather get a half a point per swing than a tenth of a point per swing. So better to serve number 16 for Wisconsin than yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just underway here in the third Wisconsin has been in system an awful lot. Number 21 another freshman three freshmen on the floor now for Wisconsin Grace Loberg registers another kill and she's got 13 kills on 24 swings matching her career high of last week and we're just underway in the third. Plummer ball set a little bit inside high up into the block. Plummer able to tuck the ball down inside. It's got to be frustrating if you're coach Kelly Sheffield you get exactly what you look for and that is you know the ball's going to plumber the blocks in the right place but they didn't put their hands far enough across the net the ball trickles in underneath the blockers hands on the other side of the net here is Fitzmorris going short working on Bates and immediately a quick point against a very reliable receiver number four for Wisconsin so reliable she was their Libro last year yep when Molly Haggerty was healthy and playing in the lineup for Wisconsin again last year Wisconsin lost to Stanford in five sets in Madison in front of a capacity crowd Wisconsin does an unbelievable job with their fan base some of the best in the country Loberg again showing a lot of variety Karch she too has mixed in some roll shots and love that one there's no defending that when you hit those high fingers off the end blocker right there off of Jenna Gray's left hand. The only way to defend it is to stand 20 feet back behind the court. And you don't want to do that. For Loberg, three matches, three career highs. That ball was on the floor in front of McClure. Service winner for Wisconsin. <laughs> Defensive specialist Amber McDonald back to serve. Plummer going off speed, easily controlled by Clark. And on the overpass, the former basketball player with a two-handed, well, you knew it was coming, a really two-handed no. slam dunk. There's no winning that play for Jenna Gray. One serve into the tape for a winner. Another good serve with pressure for McDonald, who gives way to Lauren Gillis. Gillis, a 6'1 senior out of Newcastle, Indiana, started her career at USC, made 20 starts last year, bothered by some back issues. So she's playing in the backcourt, and Loberg is playing in the front court. Pretty good job sharing the duties. Nice pass by Clark. Overpass, what a reaction by Alade. Legally set from behind the three meter line and Catherine Plummer is roofed for the first time. I think Redke got that <laughs> based yes, on her. <laughs> she finally reached in to the angle that she's had a lot of opportunities to get that first time and now at the service line trying to hit that flat 
serve and creates a good scoring chance. Three blockers up for Wisconsin. Nice change of pace once again in that scene between area one and area six. Area one, they used to be the service area, but the right back, area six and the yeah. middle back. First, that was the first block for Wisconsin in this match. That's a surprising number. They averaged two and a half per set. Good pass by Gillis. And Tiana Williams. Very, very quick off the floor. Quick off the floor, and there is very little time to react. That's one of the beauties of that slide offense. It really forces teams to play one-on-one -on -one against that hitter. And those hitters, those slide hitters, win that battle a very high percentage of the time. Right side to Lutz. Excellent first contact. And then change of pace. Look at Bates. Six kills on 14 swings. No errors. The Give job she has done in transition, Karch. And giving a little spicy look afterward, too. Threading the needle. <laughs> getting a little field goal through Lutz's arms. McClure coming right back. Wisconsin still leading 7-6. Boy, Wisconsin, their serve receive has been superb so far on the evening. In system a lot, an unforced error there from McClure, out of bounds into the antenna. Wisconsin. Back to serve for the Badgers, number four, Kelly Bates. If that's where you get offensive numbers like this in the high 300s, 395 for Wisconsin, 392 wow. for Stanford. Wow. It's because of great passing like we're seeing on both sides. Oh, look at that hanging in. What a dig by Clark. One more time, this time by Bates. Oh, but they don't get the set. Tough ball to handle, didn't have any spin on it. And Tiffany Clark can't make the play the third time. Wonderful effort by Wisconsin, really hanging in and taking some shrapnel. Just got to applaud a play like that. That is so fun to watch. She's just trying to pad her digging stats, I think. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put it over the net and have her hit back at me. I'll get two digs out of this rally. Look at this. Perfect pass again. Oh, and now Hens returns. What a read by Hens. Kept alive at an impossible angle. Talk about eye work. Morgan Hens just went where you're not supposed to be able to go. Exactly, and she betters Clark. She oh, comes oh. way across in front of her teammate to make that play. Tied at eight. A rare unforced error for Loberg, number 21. She has uh, been on target since being inserted into the starting lineup last week at Iowa State. Uh, and the problem is, when Stanford's this good offensively, there's a lot of pressure on you to be just as good. Good read by Plummer. Oh, and a better block. Sydney Hilly shutting the door that time on McClure one on one. And one of these teams can certainly make their lives a lot easier by just creating more trouble from the service line. Oh, a smart shot that time by Gray. Front court setter off of Retke. Retke's shape. That was really, really smartly done by number one in white for Stanford. Exactly. If she tries to go with her left hand and just shove it to the middle of the opposing court, Retke's going to stuff her. But instead, she uses her right hand and throws it out of bounds off the blocker. On the slide, Fitzmorris down the line. Doug kept alive and can't be followed up on. Good hustle by Wisconsin. Adriana Fitzmorris has been a little bit quiet tonight, but she's been all, look at this, six of 14. So Paul, what are you talking about? I'm hitting 429. <laughs> <laughs> and that serve missed into the top of the net. Wisconsin. 
Wisconsin won the opening set very impressively. 25-22, Stanford came right back to take the second. Now very, very close here in the third. Plummer overpass, Loberg taking advantage. And you have a lot of good passers out here, Paul, but when you expose Plummer, who also has to go hit after she passes, that's a wise maneuver just to try to attack her. Now you see her step forward. She's now out of the, the reception pattern, the reception formation, and instead, Hence was ready to take that. Sydney Hilly is still able to get the ball on her. <laughs> Catherine Plummer <laughs> said, yeah, no problem. Okay, you want me to do the extra work? Pass that hit? Sure. Plummer now with 17 kills on 30 swings. Same thing on this side. Wisconsin's best two passers are the only ones you get to serve at. So you got to hit it hard in the big seam between them. A lot of teams don't utilize short serving. Would you do that, Karch, against just two receivers? Uh, it depends. I, I would probably try when you have this kind of offensive firepower happening and this kind of offensive efficiency just to try to disrupt patterns. You got to find the right person who doesn't read the short serve as well and is su more surprised by it. Tied at 12. And nicely over the deep cross court corner. Moretta Lutz, number 17, registering the kill. Lutz now in double figures with 10 kills. Yeah. Sydney Hilly across the net to your left. She's going to let that go, and then she's really frustrated with herself because they caused. Stanford to set the play that they felt like they could defend well. A rare miscue on the first contact, but Kelly Bates taking out the trash. Nicely done. Number four for Wisconsin having a magnificent night. I would, you know, you would think off all around, you know, play defense, pass, attacking the ball brilliantly. Remember, she's hitting 245 on the year. That's not bad, but it's not 467. <laughs> she's essentially almost doubling what she has done on the season. Really effective. And working around people like Moretta Lutz, who are nine inches taller than she is. 132nd match for Bates. Does not want it to be her last. Tough swing here, going off speed. Lutz. Both of these Libros are all over the place. What a job they're doing. There was Hintz. Here's Clark. Free ball coming to Stanford. Right side to Moretta Lutz. Tammy Alotti did a wonderful job working to draw some attention out of the middle card and free up Lutz. We've come to the media timeout. Back and forth we go. You say that Wisconsin, hey, they were only 11 and 9 in the Big Ten. I'll tell you, they're taking everything the Stanford Cardinal can offer up. Incoming! <laughs> ESPN has a trifecta, trifecta of events for you beginning at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. It's the MLS Cup between Toronto FC and the Seattle Sounders. Then at 8, the Heisman Trophy presentation. Will it be Baker Mayfield of Oklahoma? Lamar Jackson from Louisville once again. And Bryce Love from right here at Stanford. Then at 9 Eastern, top-ranked boxing, the WBO Junior lightweight title fight between Vasily Lomachenko and Guillermo Rigando. Who will it be? A big trifecta Saturday on ESPN. Oh, big stuff blocked by Alade. Bryce Love, who has had a magnificent career here as a running back at Stanford. Look at that. First, second in total yards, rushing 17 rushing touchdowns. I think it's Baker Mayfield, personally, of Oklahoma. And deservedly so. Shot up into the block. Stanford looking to extend the lead to Lutz down the line. Timeout called by Wisconsin. 
A 4 nothing run for the Stanford Cardinal. Match summary of this contest, the last spot available in the regional finals, Wisconsin battling Stanford. Catherine Plummer has been superb, but offensively, Karch, both of these teams, they're both good blocking teams. They're both good defensive teams, and offensively, it's just been a shootout. Stanford with four hitters hitting 429 or above. That's really difficult to do. And Wisconsin with five hitters hitting 333 or better and down a little in this match. Wisconsin, you go into this match, ask them, would you want to have five hitters hitting 300? Yeah, we're almost certain to win. Williams on the slide, number 11 for Wisconsin, able to tuck that ball down inside. Jonah Williams now 7 of 14, <laughs> hitting 500. Just two very, very hot offensive teams. And they're trying to serve tough. That one missed just down the line. And part of the challenge is, yep, you can serve tough, but each team is exposing a, a group of very good passers. This is one of Wisconsin's better passing rotations. They don't even have Lauren Gillis exposed here. She's playing in the backcourt, but more as a defender. That ball really as a passer. That ball served out of bounds by Morgan Hintz. Just looking at the digging numbers, only credited with 11. What are they counting by thirds or something? This <laughs> is Stanford. I, I don't think they get. Right. I don't think they get that wrong. Both Libros have been fantastic. Ah, crack a lack a down the line by Moretta Lutz. Just broke a hole in the floor. Just a bit too much line. <laughs> Perfect delivery, right on target by Jenna Gray. Speaking of on target, in system, Williams once again. Playing with that heavy, heavy brace, and it, it seemed to really limit her in practice a little bit yesterday, but an explosive athlete. And she's on very limited jumps as the week goes on. Some days she doesn't practice, others a little bit, but sure seems springy here. Good deep serve. McClure in trouble, as is Stanford. And Catherine Plummer with a rare unforced error. And Wisconsin working their way back into this. Trailed 15-13 at the media timeout. Trailed by as many as four and now back in it. Trailing just 19-17. Relatively easy serve. And you see the difference. Fitzmorris dug on target. Fitzmorris, nice shot by number 12 into the cross court. If I were Hilly, I think I would have set Retke in transition on that one. She had a one on one opportunity, easy target right in front of her, six foot eight. Oh, tough serve. Excellent pass. Loberg again, continuing to add to her new career high. Now, with 16 kills leading the way for Wisconsin, Retke has nine, Kelly Bates has seven, Tiana Williams has seven as well, Plummer with 16, Moretta Lutz with 13 for Stanford. Tough serve by Hilly. Timeout called by Stanford and the Wisconsin Badgers back within one. Starting to see a little bit tougher serving. It was interesting speaking with Wisconsin head coach Kelly Sheffield about his young setter and teaching her that you got to learn different ways to talk to different people. One player might react if you get in their face a little. Another needs a little more support and and Hilly said to Coach Sheffield, what do you think that Lauren Carlini would say about that? Well, let's find out. Or Haley Nelson, yeah. Yeah, and they did a Skype conversation and had it just go one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, he was, uh, Kelly Sheffield, a uh, gleam in his eye, was talking about what a grown-up young freshman he's got, going to have her for three more years at the setting position. Yeah, he was saying after that conversation, some of Hilly's teammates 
noticed her yeah. communication was different and they had no idea that she was working on that phase of her game. This week on ESPNW.com, Florida's Mary Weiss, a champion for volleyball. Second up, heavy hitters and sizzling matchups on the road to Kansas City scores, highlights, analysis, and more of the 37th NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship. Back with Karch Kirai, I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks for joining us. It has been an interesting Friday indeed. Earlier tonight here at Naples, an absolute thriller. A comeback for Texas 16-14 in the fifth over Utah, Kentucky in five sets as well in their regional semifinal, taking out BYU. And now we got a real battle going on between Stanford, the number three seed, and the unseeded Badgers of Wisconsin. Plummer. Goes a little bit tight, no matter. That's over Madison Duello at six foot three and Dana Recchi at six foot eight. Small scene, but still a magnificent swing. Overpass. Nice dig in the cross court by Duello. Does she save a point? Yes, she does. What a dig by number 14, not giving up on the play. Yeah, I'm so impressed at how all of these players stay completely through the play. There's no giving up. And not only does she get it up, but Clark get, puts up a very hittable ball off that scramble play. There's a short serve. And over the top, one short serve deserves a short shot. Catherine Plummer, the complete repertoire. And now Stanford three points away from taking the two sets to one lead. And Yazi Bedard Hani waited until one of the last plays <laughs> of the match to break out her soft shot. What a heroic performance for the backup. What is she? Outside hitter, middle hitter, right side. There is Retke. Good touch out of the. Influence for or experience from Plummer. Just that's a, a perfect high line shot trying to make the defender travel and cover too much ground. Timeout called by Wisconsin. Let's take a moment. We mentioned the thriller between Texas and Utah. And look, all the credit to the Utah Utes. What a season. What a performance they put up against the six-seeded Longhorns from Texas. But you get the idea. Number 27 was the hero for the Longhorns. There was match point. 12 kills on 23 swings. <laughs> and Who's I, the hero tonight? And I love how Lexi yeah, said. Yeah. Who Bedard Honey came in for was one of the first to congratulate her. So there is the bracket once again at 10 Eastern Time on ESPNU. Karch and I will close things out. Texas will either take on Stanford or Wisconsin. I'm digging for the box score here for that match. Back and forth. I want to make sure that we get the numbers. Yeah. yeah. 12 for 26. Yasmin Bedard hit Ani hit 462. Zero hitting errors. Yeah, remarkable performance off the bench, and she had not played at the outside hitting position in a month. She hadn't played anywhere in a month. So like hadn't set foot in the in a match wow. in, a, in a month. That is how tough do you have to be mentally? 23-20, the advantage. Jenna Gray and Stanford. Bates is rejected. Temi Alade along with Moretta Lutz set points for Stanford. Tough serve, perfect pass. Ricky 
Got that away from Alade. Dana Retke registers her 10th kill. Got off to a really hot start, Karch. Stanford has slowed her down a little bit, and the Cardinal looking at another set point. Kelly Sheffield was thinking about making a backcourt substitution. This has been a fairly long set. He's up to 13 subs. You get 15. And that ball served out of bounds. And Stanford takes the two sets to one advantage. On top here in the third, 25-21. Back with a fourth set. Wisconsin, a must win to stay alive. You're watching the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual back on the beautiful campus of Stanford University. There is the very famous tower. And Morgan Hentz once again. Kelly Sheffield told us yesterday he thought that in the latter stages of the match last year, it was Hentz that was the difference. And with play, plays like this, no wonder. It almost start making Wisconsin think like they shouldn't hit cross court into her half anymore half plus she's taken more than 15 feet and then jumping in on the short serves times diving for a ball tonight <laughs> what did the third judge give her a 5.4 or a 5.2 Been very, very closely contested so far on the night. And for Wisconsin Karch, they've started to cool off just a little bit. You pointed out a very interesting number during the set. Stanford is siding out at 70% or above in each of the three sets so far tonight. That is remarkable. Yeah, it is. Uh axiomatic that if you side out better if you win more points when the other team serves then the other team wins when you serve you're guaranteed to win the game and so Stanford siding out at a very high percentage and there's their one for one in this game another perfect pass this time by Hintz both teams were very hot offensively now the onus is on Wisconsin they got to serve some BBs here and get Stanford off the net Look at Grace Loberg. Loberg now with 18 kills. And those are the best kinds of side out. They only, they're low calorie side outs, only need three <laughs> touches. Pass, set, kill. Pass, set, kill. And, uh, and that can really wear a team down and put a lot of pressure on them. That ball served out of bounds. Yeah, if Loberg rips the ball into the cross court, Morgan Hintz yeah. will probably <laughs> dig it. You have to hit it sort of <laughs> off the sport court in order to get her out of range. Fitzmorris back to serve. The winner of this will get Texas. Good block touch, first contact, Alade! Beautiful transition volleyball. Starts with the great touch off the block. Watch Alade turn, get off the net, beyond the three-meter line, and then Gray gets her the ball in the perfect spot. Yeah, you and I were talking at lunch, Karch, when I was asking you about transition percentages, and you said, look, there are two kinds of transition opportunities, out of system and in system. That was in system because of the soft touch and the pass by McClure. That sure was. Great block touch. There is first year head coach Kevin Hamley, eight years previously at the University of Illinois. He led the Fighting Illini to a runner up finish in 2011. Oh. Wow. That was a crack a lack of cross court from about nine feet off the net. But to me, it looked like with that set and her position, that's the only place she should have gone or could have gone. She was shot committed is, is something we talk about in volleyball, but Retke did not put her hands in front of that shot that she was committed to. On second look, that ball was not that far off the net. Using the slide takeoff, Dana Retke, number 16, able to register the kill for Wisconsin. Number eight, 
Sarah Dodd will come in now, the 5'4 sophomore out of uh, Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. Alade again, what a per Wisconsin is serving Morgan Hetz too often? I think so. I think so, gotta try to get it short to Plummer, take her out of her route, or at least put a little more pressure on Megan McClure. Yeah, Hentz has been lights out defensively in first contact since the opening set. That ball will drift long from Plummer. Catherine Plummer, the Pac-12 Player of the Year, 20 kills on 34 swings. Wow, that's efficient. She got one service ace, seven digs, and four blocks for Stanford. McClure. And missed that over the top, looking for a touch none there. Better serving strategy, working on the front court attacker in McClure. That's a miss. And the predictable result. Libro's wearing the black jersey. You, you know who you don't want to serve. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the different color usually means Avoid at all costs. He's a good passer. But lots of times it's not that easy, Paul, for servers to hit the edges like Morgan Hentz did there, to serve toward the sidelines. They're afraid to miss. And that one went right down the middle to, to Morgan Hentz, that last Wisconsin serve. Bates up into the block, restarting the point, ripping into the oh. cross court. Dug by who else? And a rip that time by Tiana Williams. One of the few times the ball is going in, gone into Hentz's area, and she doesn't come up with it. The numbers still offensively. Stanford's hitting 431, Wisconsin 349. Good shot into the cross point once again by McClure. Megan McClure is really on a nice trajectory here now in the latter stages of her freshman season. And originally they were trying to figure out who would fill that spot and they they opted for that mostly for her ball control. She brings good passing to the offense and then they can get the ball to the hitters who need better passing like Alade. They can get Plummer in system. They can set Fitzmaurice. They can set Lutz. But she's carrying her weight offensively now as the season has gone along. Exactly. Hitting error that time by Wisconsin. Here is Formico. And this is that serve into the top of the tape. The serving story. Nine errors for Wisconsin to go along with three aces. Four service aces for Stanford. Backed up with 11 aces. 11 errors, excuse me. Here is Clark. Demi Alade having an unbelievably efficient night. We, she hasn't gotten many opportunities, <laughs> but she's making the most of them going seven for eight. <laughs> Retke no, outside, oh, dug by Hintz. Up near the scoreboard, outside to Plummer. Tries to go off speed and misses it. A break for Wisconsin. Hans is so good at reading the hitter, anticipating where it's going to go. And it's a lot due to eye work. You just have to see where the ball is in relation to the hitter's shoulder. What a nice pass. And Jenna Gray, the two-handed setter dump. And here's one of those reads, putting herself, look at how Stanford's giving her half the court to defend. And they know that she'll figure out, she'll be able to extract the information from the hitter across the net to put herself in the right spot. Loberg really feeling it offensively. And I think if Hens had been in, <laughs> that ball would have come up, but she was off the court. So good choice at the right time by Loberg. Uh, one of the two middle blockers serves. In that case, it's Fitzmorris. So for that one serving turn, Morgan Hetz has to go to the sideline. And boy, serving has fallen off a little bit as this match is worn on. Stanford on top, 11-9, leading two sets to one. The winner will take on Texas. 
Florida USC down in Gainesville in Lexington. It will be Nebraska and Kentucky. Penn State will take on the Spartans of Michigan State. Nice pass by Bates. Three blockers up that time. Did Moretta Lutz help him get a piece of that? I think she did, and she made a great choice because Kelly Bates had to go to the floor to make that play. So Lutz pulls in, knowing the likely set is going to Retke. Retke on the slide, up into oh. the scoreboard. Legal play as long as the ball stays on your side. And hence reacted properly. Hans has got, got it up. Spatula is dripping. Oh, wow. I think Coach Sheffield's going to challenge, but I thought, I thought Hans got her hand under that. So there will be a challenge as part of the rule ball in or out. That also includes ball up or down. You can see her. She's a little upset that that's even being challenged. Like, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> how dare you, Wisconsin? Oh, we're, we're oh, being told okay. it's a net violation. We had one earlier on in the match when Kelly Bates, we thought she had come up with it, the way the ball yeah. reacted. But the replay showed that it had clearly landed in front of Bates. Yeah, it's very difficult to fool Hens on those plays. And even if she is fooled, she'll dive a little farther, get her hand underneath it. I'm trying to remember where the net might have been. Uh, oh, maybe by a latte, but remember also by rule, if your hair, hair contacts the hair net, is that is not, a, not a violation. That's right. It has to be clear and irrefutable. So not challenging ball up or down. It's challenging a net violation on Tammy Alade of Stanford. We're going to get the call right here. Net violation called against Stanford. So good use of the challenge. So put the point on the board for Wisconsin, and that makes it 12-10 here in the fourth. Good challenge by Coach Sheffield. Yep, and Retke staying on to serve this trip through off the top of the tape. Perfect set to Plummer. Doing work. What a set that time by Hans Karch. Bettering the ball. You see her do that almost every time. And that put Plummer in a position where she could hit around even six hands in front of her with a three-person block. Plummer now with 21 kills on 37 swings. And remember, earlier this season, Coach Hamley was talking about, we don't want to overuse her. We've, we've got to, we got to. I remember that conversation. Manage, <laughs> manage our offense, keep her attempts down. And, but when you, she's hitting like this, it's tough to resist the temptation to set her every ball. Tiana Williams misses that ball out of bounds. Yeah, we had a regular season Pac-12 contest here at Maples. It was Stanford against Washington. And we talked to Coach Hamley about that when Catherine Plummer was averaging 10 swings per se. Now that won't that that won't persist throughout the course. A serve here. She's averaging a little bit more than 10 now. <laughs> well, Jenna Gray is making the decisions, and you want to go to the conference player of the year, Stanford, on a 3-0 run and 10 taking control here in what might be the decisive fourth set. Presented by Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. Next week, the NCAA National Semifinals will be Thursday night on the 14th, starting at 7 Eastern on ESPN. For more information, you know where to go on the tournament, NCAA.com, home of all 90 championships. Back with my partner, Karch Kirai, and the tree. 
good reason to be dancing right now. Up two sets to one and 15 to 10. Stanford has won the national championship on seven occasions, tied with Penn State for the most ever national titles. Penn State advanced easily earlier today. Nice dig that, excuse me, blocked by Alade. And Alade decided just, I'm going to jump with the quick because I see my the opposing outside hitter on the floor. Great choice by Alade, easy block. Timeout called by Wisconsin, a 4 nothing run. And Kelly Sheffield squad, Wisconsin, trailing now by six and facing elimination from the tournament. ESPN has two great matchups this Saturday afternoon at noon. Number one, Duke takes on Boston College, and then at two, Indiana faces Louisville. Men's basketball on ESPN Saturday at noon, and two Eastern and streaming live on the ESPN app. It's been a very eventful and busy week here in Stanford Athletics. Last weekend, the Stanford Cardinal women's soccer team faced off against the UCLA Bruins in the Women's College Cup Final. Jay Boissier's left-footed strike in the 67th minute gave Stanford the lead for good. Stanford wins a thriller 3-2. to two. Men's soccer advances to the national championship. They'll take on Indiana in Philadelphia. I believe that's on Sunday. Bryce Love, a Heisman finalist. And the Stanford women's volleyball team, the defending national champions, are hosting the regional. And that soccer win against the Bruins tied it up. Each school with 114 wow. NCAA titles. Stanford with a chance for 115 this weekend, and if uh, in uh, in soccer that is uh, men's soccer. I 114 think. national championships. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You can see up on the uh, up in the corner, Stanford hasn't had time after that women's <laughs> soccer game so recently to, to paint over the 113 that's up in the corner. They gotta they gotta lift their game a little bit. <laughs> and so does Wisconsin. Trailing Catherine Plummer and Stanford here in the fourth. Duello into the cross court and down number 14. Not used a lot offensively. Duello now four kills on seven swings. Pretty efficient. Wisconsin needs to be nearly perfect. Is there an area where they can really push the envelope a little here, Karch? Lutz. Beautiful swing and out of the reach that time of Tiffany Clark. You know, they have some matchup problems. For example, six foot eight Lutz hitting against 5'11 or six foot Kelly Bates. A lot of it's going to come down to you have very good passers for Stanford, but they've got to come up with some of their answers, either serving short or making some tough plays. Oh, and hence getting beat. What a little bit of a misconnect there. Not sure Tiana Williams meant to tip that ball to a perfect spot, but Wisconsin will take it. They certainly need it. Stanford has been siding out at an incredible rate, over 70% through the first three sets. Service winner here. And when you have McClure, Pence, and Plummer, Plummer's not a bad passer. She's just the target you would want to pick out among those three. So that's the right place to serve, space around Plummer in this particular formation, these three players. Service a miss. Yeah, service phase of the game starting to betray Bates and Wisconsin. A number of misses here in both the third and fourth set. Cape Formico coming on to serve. 5'11, 5'9 freshman out of Saratoga. Cousin of Kerry Walsh Jennings, who many years ago had an awfully good indoor career here at Stanford, dug by Hintz. If it's Morris, no, to McClure into the cross court. Boy, Stanford is showing a lot of confidence in this freshman. McClure now with six kills on 20 swings. And again, Loberg with another kill. Now with 20 leading the way offensively for Wisconsin. She has been superb. Wearing number 21, another career high for the third match in a row. Boy, 
Pollard. Very easy serve, and Fitzmorris up into the edge, dug by Clark. Fitzmorris again on the slide into the back row. At this point, Paul, you can't really give Stanford two swings right. at it, and Wisconsin wasn't able to squeeze out a good set when the ball came up on their side, so Fitzmorris finishes the play. Very nice crossbody into the right back, and Kelly Sheffield calls his second and last time out here in the fourth. Stanford in control, leading 20 to 14. Texas waiting in the wings. I'm sure their coaching staff is taking plentiful notes. But uh, Penn State will take on Michigan State. That starts Saturday, 8 Eastern time on ESPNU. Nebraska and Kentucky at 4 Eastern time. Florida down at the bottom taking on USC. And then closing out the night, it'll be Texas against either Stanford or Wisconsin. Looks like it's going to be Stanford. A very, very game effort for Wisconsin. Once again, playing without Molly Haggerty. She'll be back next year, as will Retke, as will be Tiona Williams, as will be Sidney Hilly. 20 to 14 is the advantage. There is Haggerty. She's unfortunately been in sweats all season long. The Big Ten Freshman of the Year last season when Wisconsin advanced to the regional finals at home in Madison before losing to the Stanford Cardinal after being up two sets to none. Wash, uh, sorry, Wisconsin's going to be formidable. Oh, wow. Basically, they only lose Kelly Bates, and Molly Haggerty steps right into that slot. One of the main players who are, who are playing this evening. Here is McClure coming out of the timeout. Working on Bates. And a big block by Stanford. Fitzmorris along with Gray. Tenth stuff block for Stanford, only two for Wisconsin. McClure going for a very tough serve and misses that one, but the advantage is still 21-15. There is still time, but not much. Wow, what a save by Gray. A couple of very impressive setters. Nice shot by Duello up into the block. Restart the point. Plummer all over that. Are you kidding me? First of all, she completely read that tip. Wow. And then sharp cross court from the middle of the court. This is a really nice adjustment when she had to play defense in the middle of the court. She doesn't try to run back out to the sideline. She stays in the middle. Wisconsin with no answer. That's going to be interfering with the set. That ball looked like that it was in the plane. Getting back to that swing by Catherine Plummer. I was crummy at geometry, but that one just didn't <laughs> seem to compute. Not supposed to be able to hit it there from here. Plummer now with 22 kills. Perfect pass. And a stuff block by Bates. Wisconsin's not done yet. Short serve, well read by McClure. Lutz out of the back row. Clutch kill. Stanford really needed that, Karch. You can see Kelly Sheffield, he, he was just laughing and shaking his head at Kevin Hamley like, what do we have to do? We, we forced you to set the option that we thought we had the best chance of, and what happens? Lutz hits it right into the corner. Recky can't be dug by McClure. Dana Recky has had a spectacular freshman year at Wisconsin. Again, the freshman of the year in the Big Ten Conference. Led Wisconsin in kills. Set seven program records 
and only in her first year. Tough serve. Oh, on the double click. Marena Lutz takes Stanford to match point, regional final point, to take on Texas tomorrow night. Tough swing for Bates, well off the net, but gets it through. It looks like Kelly Bates' career is coming to an end, but she's got eight kills on 22 swings, a couple of digs as well. And I think, given her durability, the number of matches, the number of sets she's played, she will be remembered for a long time, but so will this win for Stanford. They win it 25 to 19 here in the fourth. So Stanford will advance once again to a regional final and take on the Texas Longhorns. Two old friends, they know one another very well from going head to head for a long time in the Big Ten Conference, but Stanford wins it. Your thoughts, Karch? Well, Stanford is no surprise. Plummer was incredibly strong. The surprise earlier this evening in this regional was Texas yeah. and, and Bedard Honey coming in to turn it around. That will be interesting to see who's on the floor tomorrow starting for Texas. So from coast to coast, the regional finals are set. For my partner, Karch Karai, I'm Paul Sunderland. Sam, good night from Palo Alto, where once again, Stanford eliminates Wisconsin three sets to one. Coming up next is the Basketball Hall of Fame Classic between Nevada and TCU. Be sure and join us tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern time on ESPNU for the regional final, Texas and Stanford. The tree says good night.